You're listening to a podcast of Relatively Speaking on MPB Think Radio. To hear previous shows, visit mpbonline.org or download the MPB Public Radio app to listen on your iPhone or Android phone on demand. Good morning. This is Relatively Speaking, the show all about you and your family. I'm Dr. Susan Buttress, Professor of Pediatrics at the University of Mississippi Medical Center. Is self-care a selfish thing to do? That sounds like a silly question, but of course it's not selfish. However, many women neglect themselves so that they can serve others. That may sound altruistic, wonderful, nurturing, and giving, but is it the right thing to do? Today, we'll be talking about self-care why it needs to happen, and why neglecting that self-care is not only harmful to you, but to those around you. So before we get started, good morning, Michelle. Good to have you, my producer, with me again. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Dr. Butchers. Hope you're having a good time where you are and being safe and careful. Well, I'm down on the Gulf Coast where I come often, and the Mississippi Gulf Coast. And yes, we had quite the rainstorm this morning. It was um, beautiful, but uh, a little windy. <laughs> yeah, we we had rain in this area as well. Um, hope everybody's being safe and careful out there. It is spring break. You see a lot of uh, people enjoying the coast, the beaches, and things like that. Oh, yeah. Well, actually, um, the it's St. Patrick's Day celebration down here. So, yes, it was pretty crowded this weekend down here. It is. St. Patrick's I, Day is Thursday. Thursday, yeah. Don't so forget to I wear know. your green. <laughs> yeah, don't forget everybody on Thursday particularly. Well, speaking <laughs> of, right, speaking of vacations and spring break, that's a part of self-care. Actually taking time and spending time and having fun with your family and friends and getting away from work. It is. It is. And so that's all part of it. But you and I have talked a lot about this because um, as working women and mothers and um, hopefully nurturers and caretakers, I think we, like many, struggle. And, you know, I don't want, even though this is, um, women's month um, this month I I don't want us to um, just pretend like self-care is only for women um, a lot of this pertains to men too so men as you're hearing this uh, show keep in mind that you you can adapt some of these things for yourself but also, I just want to encourage you as, as men to, to look at the women in your life, whether that's your mother or your sister or your aunt or your, your spouse, to, to look and see what you see going on with them. Because there, there are a few things I want to point out as to why we thought this might be a good show to step through. I don't think uh, anybody, most most women and men recognize the importance of caring for themselves um, as they also take care of family and friends. But um, data shows that many women fail to really take care of themselves. And um, there have been surveys uh, that have been done over the years. Uh, I thought there was an interesting survey that was done back in uh, 2000 by the Times Limited. Now, that was a fragrance product company, but it was done by um, the uh, a researcher who um, has participated in really robust, good research. Alice Domer, a PhD, and a author of a bestseller, Self-Nurturing. Um, and she's at the Harvard uh, Mind and Body Center, or was. Now, this survey was 20 years ago. I was trying to look for 
surveys that were a little more current, and though there are some, um, I really liked the very specifics that these uh, researchers were looking at. And so I just I wanted to point a few things out, and then I want to throw questions out to our listeners. Do you think this is still current? You know, the year 2000 was now 22 years ago. That's hard to believe. But um, here are a few things that they found, and I, and I do think a lot of this is still true. As I look at not just my age bracket, but my younger friends who I hear are struggling, and I talk with them, they're struggling with a lot of this. Okay, um, married women are more than twice as likely to say that they have less than 10 minutes a day to spend on themselves as compared to single women. Um, you know, I, and that sounds terrible, 10 minutes. That's not a lot of time to meditate, to um, to just do something that you really enjoy. Um, we know that kids take up a lot of time. Only 8% of mothers with one child say they find time to spend a total of, 60 minutes throughout the day. So that's not a surprise. I think um, anybody who has had to caretake children um, find that their their day, their, their free time is very limited. And often it happens in the very early morning before the children wake up or the very late at night. So what happens there? I think many times women who are trying to have time for themselves are sacrificing the need of sleep that we talk about so often. So just want you to think about that. A um, couple of other um, roadblocks that were found in this survey, don't think they've changed a lot, but maybe they have. Um, over a third say that cleaning um, and cooking get in the way of any time. Um, many say that obviously their job gets in the way. Um, many say that they are very hesitant, and I'd like to hear from our listeners about this. Many women say, um, in fact, only about 15% say that they would want their husband, their partner, or their children to take over this. So they they find they don't have any free time, but they are reticent to ask someone else to help them with the chores. Why do you think that is? Do you think there is a superwoman syndrome where they're just saying, I should be able to do it all. Do they feel like they might get some pushback? Or do they know that they can do it better and so they want to do it? Um, I'm just curious as to what what you think. Do you think you should? Here's another question I'll throw out um, to women. Do you think you should have to ask someone to help you with something that if you have a partner in the home, um, should you have to ask them to do it? Or should they automatically recognize that you need help? Now, I have heard from many, many men who have said um, women often think that you should read their minds. Um, so, men, I'd like to hear what you think. Do you think a woman should have to ask, or should you understand that part of this is, is your contribution to the household? All right. Give us a call, one eight seven seven mpb ring That's 877-672-7464. Or you can send an email to family at mpbonline.org. I, I really would like for you to weigh in because, you know, certainly um, – Women have one opinion. I try to be very open-minded about this and um, certainly try to to see both sides of it. But I am a woman, and so I'd like to hear from both sides. 
Okay, I'm going to throw out a few more things that get in the way of of time for women. And some of this is self-imposed, okay? In fact, a lot of it is. Um, almost 40% of women back then, that was 22 years ago, said digital technologies, uh, cell phones, Internet, um, and other things get in the way of having time for themselves. So they spend a lot of time on the Internet, um, on Facebook, on other things, um, tracking what others are doing instead of giving time for themselves. Now, I think that's gotten much worse. I would expect that 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 is upwards of 50% now. Now, the other interesting thing is on this, survey and a couple of others that I've seen, women are very supportive of the right for other women to have um, self-care time, self-nurturing time. Um, 90% say they think a woman who takes time for themselves and self-care is a woman with better self-esteem, who knows what's important. So the numbers don't support that, you know, we we put our money where our mouth is, that we are not really supporting ourselves in what our thoughts are for the best of others. So um would like for others to just think about that. Um, just a couple of more things, and then we'll go to break. And when we come back, I want you listeners to weigh in on this. Um, now, there was another survey done by the University of Michigan back in 2011, and it showed that women are two and a half times more likely than men to lose sleep in order to care for others. And an AARP um, survey found that almost 70% of all caregivers of seniors are women. Um, and that 25% of women face health issues due to caregiving, losing things like not going for mammograms, not going for their wellness checks, not doing, not getting enough sleep and things like that as they are caring for these elders. And then my final thing um, is that the Kaiser Family Foundation survey showed that 40% of women responded that they were solely responsible for missing work to take care of a sick child. Only 3% of men said that they were solely responsible. So why is that? Is it that in, in general we tend to um, say that a man's profession is more important than a woman's? Um, or is it something deeper than that? Just wanted to throw that out there. Okay. When we get back, um, callers, weigh in. I want to hear from you. What do you What do you think about this self care? Why do you think that women tend to do a worse job than men? Or do you think that is even true? Give us a call, one eight seven seven mpb ring That's 877-672-7464. Or you can send an email to family at mpbonline.org. This is Relatively Speaking. I'm Dr. Susan Buttrick with Michelle McAdoo, and we'll be right back. Dr. Susan Buttress. Children grow and change so fast, it's important to help them build the strong foundations they need to help develop lifelong skills and succeed in school. 
Whether it's singing songs in the car or counting steps while walking to the mailbox, there are many ways to help young children learn new skills and reach new developmental milestones. Even before they can talk, babies can make connections and respond to adults' words, sounds, and facial expressions by clapping, waving, or smiling back at them. Not only is it fun, but it's important to talk, read, and sing with children. More at MississippiThrive.com. This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. Welcome back, and thanks for listening. I'm Dr. Susan Buttress, and today we're talking about self-care. Um, and trying to address self-care um, at women, but actually at men and women. It's that women are less good, less good at doing that. And before we move on, let me just a little bit for a minute about what self-care is. You know, it it sometimes is a little bit confusing because it it can mean so many things, from spending time on your own um, to managing your health issues. But the main goal of self-care is to increase your health and happiness, okay? So whatever it takes to increase your health and happiness is what self-care is. It might mean getting enough sleep, going on a walk, making sure you're doing those health screenings. I think sometimes people confuse self-care as getting your hair done and getting your nails done. I'm not talking about that. That's fine if that gives you pleasure and relaxation. But self-care is much, much more than that. And as Michelle and I were talking, sometimes doing that routine hair or nail appointment adds increased stress rather than decreasing stress to try to find time for that. So whatever it means to you to make you happier and healthier is what we're talking about. Okay, we're going to go on to our first caller. We have Steve in Boonville. Hi, Steve. Good morning, Doctor. I, I'm sure this is another uh, can of worms that this conversation is opening up to. That's why there's some hesitance in the callers. But I, I'll just say from, from my view, I mean, there's so many different scenarios that play into that picture. But... From my view as a husband, we, we're about to celebrate our 44th anniversary this Friday, and I've, we've had to just discover um, along the way, I, I, I'm going to take it on, on the weight on my side, that I've had to learn to be a little more sensitive to paying attention to her. What what are those needs that, sh- that are unspoken? What's, what is it that seems to be dragging her down or holding her back. Um, we, we raised two kids. They're grown and out on their own now, but um, it's, it's a big difference in if it's just a married couple and, and they need to share uh, time with each other and what you'd call me time to take care of each other. Men need that too. But I think husbands really need to be sensitive, paying attention to, the, to that wife, uh, to the to the unspoken things that that she's probably too too uh, hesitant to to mention. I mean, there's the weight of taking care of a household should not fall on just a woman. That I think that big problem is the expectation that was developed generations ago that the man was out working, the woman was at home, and that was her wifely duty. But we all know now that most women are out working right along with the men. And the, the duties should be shared so that the uh, the need for me time can be nurtured and paid attention to. And it can be something as, as simple or quiet as, as a woman getting her hair done or nails done. Or, or maybe she wants to just have a night out with the ladies, her friends, which mine never had, had any problem with that. But uh, just like the guys would want to go out. And it should I think it should be allowed and respected. But... A woman, she's going to take better care of her, her husband and her family if she has the opportunity 
to take care of herself and that be allowed for her because it, it really needs to be paid attention to. I love that. Thank you for starting the conversation. And and I wonder, so, so Steve, I uh, agree with you um, that this probably is sort of a tricky conversation sometimes, but I have, like I said earlier, I have heard so many times that that men are a little bit frustrated because they find out that their significant other, wife, um, that perhaps they're upset with them about something that they didn't even know was an issue. For example, that somebody's running late to get to do something for their friends because they were trying to wrap up some things at home, when in reality, if you'd only agreed to help me with that, I could have gotten out sooner. Um, so to to be do you do you think in general that is truly a problem? And did you have to step through that with your wife to get her to communicate better with you, or was she one of those individuals who laid it on the line to start with? I'll say when it comes to um, her own self care, she's been very self sacrificing. And it took me a long time to become more sensitive to to watching her quietly, watching her, not not making any issues of it, but seeing where she's struggling, where she was needing help, and where she was needing time to to uh, to nurture herself in some way. And and I just had to become more sensitive to it. And maybe I mean I'm a Christian, and and I believe the Lord has helped me along the way for me. Be, to be praying to be a better husband and to do that you've got to be sensitive to paying attention to it and I've I've over the last I'd say maybe 10 years I've uh, step, just stepped forward gone out of my way to asking her what's, what's bothering you or what do you need or what can I do to help and it's, it's just really a, a responsibility I think that a husband should take to nurture his wife because She'll be a better wife if she is taken care of in every way. Oh, I think we'll we'll all be better people if we if we are able to take care of ourselves in in the ways. And and I think this just brings up something. Thank you, Steve, for for starting this conversation because I think it brings up something that maybe women. I think men also have a lot of trouble doing is having good, clear, open communication so that if something is wrong, that you express ways that you perhaps think can make it right. Um, and, And I think that is one of those areas that we many times view it as complaining when it's not complaining if you do it in the right fashion. If you say out loud, I'm feeling a little stressed. I really need a little bit of help with this. Can you please do blah? That is not complaining. It's expressing your feelings. It's letting people know where you are. And then coming up with a solution. Um, and I, I think if you if you think about couching things in that way to express where you are, express what you need, and come up with a solution, that that is not complaining. That's trying to solve a problem that you feel stuck in. Dr. Butchers, I, that, I believe yeah. at the top of the show when you were asking um, – uh, our audience questions about do you uh, do things to take care of yourself? If you do, why? If you don't, why? Do you feel guilty if you do? I think that is one of the reasons why a lot of women do not um, feel comfortable. I mean, maybe taking a day off or setting that monthly or weekly time to get away, like you said, not just hair and nails, just maybe a spa day or even getting the massage or like you said, Taking off, t- 
taking a walk, going to the park, reading your favorite book. You feel guilty as a woman sometimes not doing those things that you feel that people expect you to do. So taking care of the kids, cooking the food, even going to work, paying the bills. I mean, a lot of single parents, single mothers are out here, and it's expected that you do these things. So when you don't or if you take time for yourself, you feel guilty. Um, it shouldn't be that way, but that is one of the reasons I feel people don't put a lot into self-care because they do feel guilty. Like um, even going back to school, you want to pursue your uh, get your master's degree or finish your uh, undergraduate g- degree. Some women feel guilty. I'm pulling away from my kids. I'm not, I'm going to be in class, but I need to be home with them. Do I pursue my personal c- goals or do I take care of my family? Unfortunately, we have these questions. Yeah, exactly. And and you brought up one area in which there there is certainly added stress, and that is a single parent household. When when you are the only one, is it okay now? When you don't have, for example, a significant other in the household who can take up some of the slack, then what do you do? Well, my contention is that you still have to engage in self-care. And so that may mean that you you truly find that isolated time that you can truly engage in self-care. And it might be just an hour a day, but an hour a day is better than none at all. And so I I want, and I'd love to hear from others about how do you do that? How, how? If you truly don't have anybody to fall back on, or you know the person in the house is not somebody that you can rely on, then then how do you find that time? And if you have, I hope you share it with us, because I think our listeners, many times I learn from our callers, and, and I would like for our listeners to get to learn from you. I have suggestions. But I think sometimes the best ones come from our callers. So give us a call at one eight seven seven MPB ring. That's eight seven seven six seven two seven four six four. Um, before we go to our next break, I just I do want to bring up uh, a couple of other other things. We are talking about this as if you know there are heterosexual couples out there only. Um, I'd like to also just throw out a question to those who perhaps are in a same-sex relationship. Do you find one individual in that relationship is perhaps more likely to, um, to be that nurturer, to be that caretaker, to be the one who is more, quote, sacrificing? And... Um, and how has that been managed? Or do you think that it is more likely in a same-sex relationship? Or if you are are in, if you're heterosexual but you have a, a same-sex roommate, um, is it more likely that that um, individual is going to divide things now equally with you? Just curious. Um, I've thought through this a lot. So, you know, as we're looking at um, the benefits of self-care, we know it lowers stress levels. There's better physical fitness. Your body mass index improves. You reduce your risk for heart disease, cancer, depression, all of that. So we're going to talk about doing it. All right. This is Relatively Speaking. We're talking about self-care. We'll be right back. This podcast is a local production of Mississippi Public Broadcasting and depends on the support of listeners like you. If you can, please donate today 
at mpbonline.org. And thanks. This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. Welcome back and thanks for listening. Um, today we're talking about self-care and why some people, many women, do not engage or take the time in self-care. And I suspect that there are many women out there who are listening right now and you're going, oh, this sounds all so wonderful and easy, but you don't know what my life is like. And, um, and I am sure that is true for many of you out there. Now, I will say that I think those of you who have listened to the show know some of my history. And I was a single parent for several years, um, working, trying to work full-time as a physician and taking care of three young children. And, um, and it wasn't easy. It was not easy, and I probably did suffer um, lack of sleep uh, as I was trying to to do that, and so I do understand, but I also would like to put out there that there are now some stressors that tug at our younger women a little bit more, and, and perhaps not just younger women, older women, that we let get in the way of um, having more time for yourself. Um, One of my daughters during Lent um, often gives up social media. And um, she is a big social media person. And so... Um, I talked with her last year after she had given up social media, and you know what she said? She said after when we got to visit at Easter, um, she said that she found that she had so much more time. And I thought that was really interesting. She found that she was able to up and read an article that she wanted to. Now, she has young kids, so she wasn't necessarily reading books, but she, you know, could stop and read an article. She could have time to go for a walk. She had time to do other things, and I think people often do not realize some of the things they're filling their time up with are not necessary and often are not only not necessary but are are bad for your general sense of well-being as we've talked about so many times self-esteem is often lower for individuals who are on facebook or instagram or other um, pieces um, a lot because of the fact that they're seeing a false self of others. And so they compare themselves to these false individuals who are only telling you the great things that have happened, only showing you the great meals that they've cooked, only showing you the wonderful places they've been. But they they typically don't post. Occasionally that happens, but typically people don't post about the bad things that have happened to them. I'm curious, does does everybody find that? Uh, I think that is in general. So please jump in and join the conversation, one eight seven seven mpb ring That's 877-672-7464. How do you take care of yourself? What have you done? Have you changed anything in your life to make it a little bit easier for you to do that? Those are all questions that I have. So let's talk a little bit about some self-care strategies that that you can do, okay? The very first thing, I've already talked about this, is self-care is not selfish care, okay? Um, it is not selfish. So it, it means that you're just taking care of yourself so that you can be a better person f- 
for those that you care about. So, so here are a couple of things that, that you can do. Um, one, obviously, you need to be your own best friend. You need to appreciate who you are and understand your capabilities and only have positive self-talk. Many times women engage in negative self-talk that is very destructive. So don't look in the mirror and say, oh, I'm so fat, or I wish my hair looked better, uh, or if only my nose were a little bit smaller. So to try to have only positive self-talk and be your best friend. And then be sure that you appreciate and gather around your own friends. Make sure that if you are feeling lonely, reach out to someone and say, I need a good friend. Let's go to lunch. Or um, will you meet me for a cup of coffee or a cup of tea? Do that if you need that. Here's another thing. Don't feel obligated. If you have uh, an hour of open time, don't always feel obligated to um, come up with a project or come up with a cleaning thing that you need to do um, or to even get on Facebook to check or get on the phone. Maybe some quiet time alone. Um, Go into a room. Go out for a walk. Think about doing that. Sometimes that quiet time can be so healing and wonderful. Um, the other thing that, that you can do is, is as you're doing that, kind of look at your surroundings. You know, when we were back in the early days of COVID and I um, was working on ways to help people calm, uh, particularly children, and we talked about just being mindful about your surroundings and, and all, that is truly a form of self-care. So let me remind you about some of those things we talked about, gosh, now almost two years ago. Um, You know, engage all of your senses. Make yourself look about and find one beautiful thing that you can focus on. It might be, I'm, I'm looking out a window right now, it might be a beautiful palm tree. It, it might be a bird. It might be a bug that is incredibly interesting and pretty. So think about that and focus on that. The same thing you can do with all of your senses. Stop and try to listen for a sound and think about that sound and absorb that sound. The same thing for a smell or for a touch or for a taste. So all of that can sort of pull you back to the center and help you. So maybe you only have 30 minutes of time to to spend by yourself. That takes no travel time. It takes no special skills. It takes no special uh, tools. It's just you and your environment and your senses. So think about that. Okay. Um, The other thing sometimes that we can do to try to help us as far as making life feel a little bit better is change your routine. It may mean that you need to unschedule some things that you said you were going to do. It might mean that Um, you no longer are going to be the mother who is the driver for every single function. It may be that you learn that other people can share in that. It may mean that your meals become much, much more simple, um, that you are only going to make a 30-minute meal rather than a two-hour meal. So um, just Think about all of that as you're moving through how life can be a little bit better. Because I know, like I said, there are many people out there who truly do not have a lot of people to lean on, but but that can happen. 
Okay. Um, I think that we still have no callers. I have open lines. Please call us at one eight seven seven MPB ring. That's eight seven seven six seven two seven four six four. Join the conversation. Whatever your thoughts are. And when we come back, I'm going to talk about a few more tips about how you can make sure that you are engaging in the best self-care that you can. This is Relatively Speaking. I'm Dr. Susan Buckers here with Michelle McAdoo, and we'll be right back. Hi, I'm Dr. Jimmy Stewart, Professor of Internal Medicine and Pediatrics at the University of Mississippi Medical Center. On the original Southern Remedy, we answer questions about all aspects of your health and share some of the latest medical information in the news. You can listen to the show on Wednesdays at 11 on MPB Think Radio, or you can subscribe to the podcast by searching for Southern Remedy on your preferred podcasting app. This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. Well, welcome back. And thanks for listening and staying with us on this show today. We're talking about self-care um, and how you do it and why you should do it. But I'm going to move a little bit to something else as we have the last a few minutes of the show to talk about self-love because to take care of yourself you really do have to love yourself and I think so many times people are spending so much time um, thinking about the things that they're not good at and they they don't do well and what they should do that they're not loving themselves like they should and if you do love yourself, it allows you to understand why self-care, if you love yourself, you're going to want to take care of yourself, right? And so um, that is all part of that. So I, I know it's helpful if you have a significant other who can turn around and appreciate your needs and wants, but everybody doesn't have that, and that's okay, you need to learn how to love yourself and take care of yourself. Now, we still have time for a caller if you want to join in. That's one eight seven seven mpb ring That's 877-672-7464. But I'm going to move on and talk about um, some of these. All right. First of all, stop comparing yourself to others, Right. So many times we're socialized to be competitive. So we compare ourselves to, to others and tend to be very critical about what we don't have that others do. So try to shift that energy away. Compare yourself to yourself. Look at how you can be your best self, but don't worry about others. And also, along that same line, don't worry about the opinion of others. Um, now, I'm not saying that you don't want to please people around you. That's great and wonderful. But don't let yourself get caught up in societal expectations. Because that can be dangerous. You cannot always stand up to those expectations. And so you want to make sure that the opinions from one individual, for example, is not destructive to you. Okay, another. Allow yourself to make mistakes. It's okay. In fact, that's the only way many times we learn. Allow yourself to have something happen and then make sure that you learn from that, right? That's everybody, we always say, you learn from your mistakes, but it truly is the truth. The older you get, often the more pressure many of us feel not 
not to make mistakes because we're supposed to know it all, but we don't. Um, I talk about that often. Um, I keep wondering when I'm not going to keep learning from these mistakes, but you know what? It continues to happen. And so know that it's okay not to be perfect. Um, Just learn if something did not go well because of something that you did or did not do, learn from that. Tuck that away as a lesson learned and use it to build on instead of using it to remind yourself of some mistake that you made, right? Now, here's a big one for women. Remember your value does not lie. And whether you have the perfect body or the perfect hair or the perfect eyes or you're the perfect size, um, the most attractive women out there and the most attractive men out there are individuals, and this is a truth, and studies have shown this, individuals who have a good self-esteem, who carry themselves well, who smile, truly smile often, who and and who talk kindly and participate with others. So know that it's not those best, most expensive clothes or anything. It's the way you present yourself to others, okay? Here's another one. We've talked about this so many times. Don't be afraid to let go of people who are dragging you down. Those toxic people can be destructive. And they may be toxic to you and that they talk badly and negatively to you. Or they may be toxic in that they drag you down because everything is negative. And those kind of people, if they're around you, often influence you in more ways than you realize so that it's hard to engage in self-care. When you feel like everything is negative and everybody's against you and everything is going to go wrong. So don't do that, okay? Let go of those toxic people. Process your fears, okay? And what I mean by that is it's okay if you're fearful about something. It's okay to be a little afraid of approaching something. But it's not okay to allow fears to paralyze you and not allow you to move on or to experience something that might be great and fun. So process the fear, process the anxiety, say, okay, that's real, but I can move on and I can do this. So make sure that you trust yourself. And that's another step, trust yourself. In making good decisions, trust yourself that your feelings are real and trust yourself to know how to move forward. Um, Okay, as we finish up in these last two minutes, I, I really want you to make sure that you remember that so many of us get fearful and anxious and paralyzed So we miss out on opportunities. So if an opportunity to do something positive for you, a nice change, and you feel like you've been stuck in an area in which you don't need to stay, take the opportunity. Put yourself first. It's okay to feel anxious and and fearful, but sometimes if you push through that, you can find joy. Um, Another characteristic that is a very positive thing and presents you well is exercise boldness. Speak out. Talk about what's on your mind. If somebody doesn't reach out to you, reach out to them, to them. And then, like I said, okay, the last two things are see the beauty in simple things. Notice that beauty. We were just talking about it. Use all those senses. And finally, be kind to yourself. Because if you're kind to yourself, you're going to be kind to others and make others happy around you. Okay? 
So I hope this will help it's helpful to all of you. If you'd like to hear this show again or any past episodes, you can listen to the podcast on your favorite podcast app. I'm searching Southern Remedies, relatively speaking. This show is a production of Introducing Radio and engineered by my producer, Michelle McAdoo. I'm Dr. Susan Buttress, and I hope you'll join us next week at 11 for Relatively Speaking, and that you'll stay tuned for NPR Here and Now, coming up next, right here on NPB Think Radio.